This video is going to debunk the myths about video capture. Some people call it video transfer. Some people call it digitizing tapes. It's more or less a continuation of my previous video. I am capturing video in the mini DV codec. I am making adjustments to the hardware, which is the intensity shuttle. You can see the changes. But you might notice when things get bright, there's pixelation or one could call it compression artifacts. And that's the restriction of using hardware as opposed to using software. I am now capturing on compressed video at 10 bit with 422 color space. And you don't see the pixelation or compression artifacts. Some people might argue the image looks kind of funky and I would tend to agree but you would never overexpose the image this much. One of these video clips is the mini DV Kodak. The other is 10 bit on compressed with 422 color space. The software goes way beyond the 8 bit 411 color space of the mini DV Kodak. That is why you are not seeing much of a difference between the two video codecs. Some of these video clips have been upscaled more than 300%. Some of the video clips are on compressed 10 bit with 422 color space. The other video clips are native DV25 video. I use the Canopus ADVC 110 Firewire DV converter to capture the native DV codec. I doubt you can tell the difference between the DV files and the uncompressed files. I included these samples in the video so you can compare them to the results you get using your method to transfer VHS tapes to the computer. As you can tell, I simply screen recorded the real-time playback of Premiere Pro. These are not rendered files. I raised the brightness and contrast on both video clips. At digitalfact.com, they state the DV codec can suffer from pixelation of bright colored areas. I think that'll only happen if you're incompetent. Lord Smurf left a comment in the blue rectangle saying DV is old tech. He said it was a step back even from VHS in many ways. Somebody left a response in the red rectangle. Most professionals accepted DV with joy. Lord Smurf responded by saying, what a stupid comment. The comments in the red rectangle are correct. I will demonstrate why later. Somebody stated Lord Smurf has a personal crusade against DV. He says that statement is ridiculous. DV has blocks and crushes chroma. He also claims HDV failed. The video you are seeing right now is HDV. I wouldn't do something this tacky for a client, obviously, but you can see the motion path looks fine. The way the dust blows around looks just fine. Everything's crisp and clean. All I did was screen capture the real-time playback of Premiere Pro. This is not a rendered file. You can hear a lot of conflicting information in discussion forums, but you have to be able to decide what is fact and what is fiction Simply posting that the contrast of mini DV can vary from the source is one thing. Providing evidence that this statement is true is another thing. On the left side of the screen, I have my Hi8 camcorder connected directly to the TV. It may look like it's connected to the ADVC 110, but it is not. On the other side of the screen, Premiere Pro is playing back that same video clip but it was captured with the ADVC 110. I'm using the Canopus ADVC 110 along with Premiere Pro to output to the TV. One could argue the TV isn't calibrated. One could argue I didn't white balance properly. It's irrelevant. They both look identical. The purples, the red, the orange. If one's slightly blown out, the other one is slightly blown out. If you were sitting two and a half feet away or even three and a half feet away from my TV monitor, you would not be able to tell the difference. Is the DV codec as bad as Lord Smurf claims or is Lord Smurf incompetent? I highly recommend everybody go to the videohelpform.com and the digitalfact.com website and demand evidence for these claims. These are the only samples at digitalfact.com. 
For one thing, I don't think these are professional videos. They look like home movies. He also says it was obviously copied with coax cables on a cheap VCR. Coax cables are used all the time with professional broadcast hardware. He wrote, note how the color of the lamp, tan, was maintained in the final file, while the dark skin color in blue jeans had the color restored. The lamp has a little bit more saturation in the software version from the original, and in the hardware version, the lamp has a little bit of a yellow-green tint. There's nothing impressive about these samples at all. And I want people to realize they are the size of a thumbnail. I had to magnify these. Sveta Spins wrote, a lot of the conversation she has ends up with the same result of people telling her to dump her Mac and try and run an old computer with Windows XP to use a specific video card. I don't agree with that at all. There's only one person telling people to build an old Windows XP system so they can run an ATI video graphics card. Lord Smurf asked the question, why buy a $2,000 Canopus DV Storm or Matrox RTX card when you could get an ATI for $200 to $400? After all, all of them could do MPEG-2 DV and uncompressed 422. Here, Lord Smurf has the cards priced at $1,000 instead of $2,000, and it says DV only and MPEG only. Uncompressed has been left out. His website has contradictions. The Canopus DV Storm was one of the first video capture cards that could output to FireWire in real time. You could have a picture-picture, lower third, do color correction, and it would output to the mini DV camcorder or a mini DV deck of your choice. It could also output in real time to professional AV monitors. Your ATI all-in-wonder graphics card was not a real-time FireWire solution. As you can tell, they have an Avid turnkey system using an IBM IntelliStation, not a cheap IBM Aptiva. They're using a Canopus DV Raptor for the video capture card. If you notice, it doesn't capture any analog video. It's strictly for DV shooters, for people that already have DV camcorders and want to monitor their editing on professional broadcast compliant equipment as opposed to the computer monitor. The same with the Canopus DV Storm. They weren't really trying to capture analog video with those systems. It was more or less a side feature. People wanted to monitor their real-time previews on broadcast-compliant hardware. Here's Panasonic Newsbyte 50, which I'm sure none of you have heard of, but it can edit the DV50 and the DV25 Kodak. And here we have Sony with their XPRI system, all the major broadcast companies embraced the Mini DV codec. The Mini DV codec may have been 8 bit with 5 to 1 compression and 411 color space, but if you have good sensors and good processors, the image quality from these cameras could be fantastic. The marriage between Avid, IBM, and Canopus was short lived. Why would you want to use a PCI card that requires drivers when you could just use a FireWire DV converter? It could work for a laptop as easy as it could work for a desktop. The software programs were getting more mature and the hardware on the computer was getting more mature. The need for these real-time acceleration cards just fizzled out. Most people didn't buy FireWire DV converters to capture VHS tape. They bought them so they could preview the sequences and timelines of Final Cut Pro 10, Sony Vegas, Premiere Pro, and Avid on broadcast-compliant hardware. Someone stated the heavyweights at digitalfact.com say the ADVC 110 does not have a built-in TBC. It does have a built-in TBC. If it didn't, your worn-out VHS tapes and Hi8 tapes would look like this. Pretty much all the PCI cards from 20 years ago had a built-in TBC. They had an integrated chip that could also clean up the wobbly, shaky video. It was not until about 5 or 6 years ago that I heard people were having difficulties capturing VHS tapes. 20 years ago it was a non-issue. Lord Smurf doesn't have time to make video samples of his work or time to do any tutorials. He does have time for interviews, which I think is a little bit self-indulgent and creepy.
he admits that he got into video production by illegally copying TV shows. To add insult to injury, he states that he still watches some of those tapes, as opposed to buying them legally on Blu-ray or DVD. Here is more proof that this interview is self-indulgent and creepy. What other websites that do VHS transfer for people have an interview on them? This shouldn't be on your website. Lord Smurf is bragging that he's done several interviews, and some of the interviews are international. I'd like to see a link to those interviews. But he also states that he had a woman interview him, and the woman twisted his words around, making him look like a criminal. You are a criminal. You made illegal copies of your favorite TV shows. He later states the woman worked for Penthouse Magazine and did dildo reviews. Why would you even mention that? You would have been better off letting us think she worked for Broadcast and Cable Magazine. Lord Smurf states that he uses broadcast-grade hardware and professional software, items not found in consumer electronics stores. All the hardware you have could have been purchased at Radio Shack 20 years ago. For the record, you wouldn't want to purchase professional broadcast equipment to do VHS transfers. At digitalfact.com, they posted, Many will attempt to open their own service from a home garage or bedroom, but these services are easy to spot. Deep-pocketed customers know how to avoid these services. How do we know your business isn't located in your mom and dad's garage? You don't have any pictures of your storefront. You also don't provide a phone number or a mailing address, and all the work is prepaid. A lot of other places that offer VHS transfer do have images of their storefront, plus they have a phone number and legitimate address. Most places that do VHS transfer do not have copyrighted material on their website, and they also have video samples, not little tiny thumbnails. Your website is not going to attract professionals. It's going to attract 23-year-old men still living in their mom and dad's basement trying to video capture the Planet of the Apes from HBO. Professionals in the world of broadcast arts would be upset to find out that you made illegal copies of your favorite TV shows and brag about it like it's some big accomplishment. If we look at the comment where this guy said, stay away from that website, a bunch of video snobs trying to sell you $2,000 pieces of equipment and giving false information. I tend to agree with that statement, and I hope none of my viewers and subscribers have bought that equipment. They always seem to have equipment for sale. I am really looking forward to hearing comments from Lord Smurf and from all of his other buddies. I highly suggest you wait 48 hours after this video post before commenting. And I want to warn you that I wouldn't try your professional bullshit on me. I say that because the first time I transferred analog tapes to the computer, I was using an $80,000 Avid Media Composer. I also have something I'd like you to read before you and your buddies make your responses. You folks can read the comments to yourselves. The comments are from Sveta Spins. You can tell she's addressing Lord Smurf as well as the people at the videohelp.com forum and the digitalfact.com forum. I think both of those forums have created a boys club. And if you are an outsider and you actually have knowledge, you won't be treated well. They don't really want to spread knowledge. They just want to maintain the little boys club. I imagine you're picking up that type of vibe as you read the comments from Saveta Spins. I want to say that Lord Smurf has his own YouTube channel. He should be able to make videos that demonstrate his claims. Lord Smurf loves to critique other people, and I think it's about time we get to critique him. He should easily be able to make a demonstration tutorial showing the superiority of using an old Windows XP computer along with the ATI All-in-Wonder card as a much better option than using a FireWire DV converter. I would not recommend the FireWire DV converters 
if they only worked with Windows XP. But the DV converters will work with any of the Mac operating systems and any of the Windows operating systems throughout the last 20 years, including the current versions. I will end the video by stating I am still willing to do a live stream with Lord Smurf.